At the Makerspace, we have a Universal Laser Systems PLS 4.75 laser cutter and engraver that students can use for academic or personal projects. Here are a few key things that you need to do in order to prepare your file to be cut or engraved. The three main operations that the laser cutter can perform are vector cutting, vector engraving, and raster engraving. Vector cutting is when the laser cuts completely through the workpiece, following the lines of the design. Vector engraving is similar, but it engraves without cutting all the way through the workpiece. It traces the design, engraving with the same line width throughout. Raster engraving is different because it engraves much like a printer prints, by going back and forth over the workpiece to engrave the image. Raster engraving is great for logos, but it can also handle pictures fairly well. We will go over how to prep pictures to be raster engraved later in the video. Each of these operations is represented differently in the software by different colors. To vector cut, the software uses red. To vector engrave, the software uses blue. And to raster engrave, the software uses black. Now we will go over how to set up a file that you would like cut with each of these operations. There are many different softwares you can use, but in this video, we will cover how to prepare files in Adobe Illustrator and Microsoft PowerPoint. The first thing we need to do in Illustrator is make a new file and create a custom artboard size. The bed of the laser cutter is 24 inches by 18 inches, so we will set our artboard dimensions to that size. We will set the color mode to RGB so we can change the colors more easily within our project. Once we are in our project, you can check your artboard dimensions by clicking Edit Artboard. If it all looks good, click Exit to close the window. One more important thing to note is that the laser cutter cannot cut all the way to the edges of the cutting space, so leave about an eighth of an inch of space from the edge of the artboard to your design. First, we'll show you how to prepare a design that you have created using the tools in Illustrator. Here I have a gear set that I want to cut out with some BYU lettering that I want to vector engrave onto the larger gear. The first thing we will do is make sure that the design is ungrouped so we can edit individual lines without affecting the whole design. Double check to make sure that you are using the selection tool and drag to highlight your design. Under the properties window on the right side, select ungroup. Once that is done, we will start by selecting the lines that we want cut, which in this case are the two gear outlines. You can select multiple lines or objects by holding the shift key and selecting each line. When you have selected the lines you would like to cut, we're going to go to the Appearance tab, make sure there is no fill, and set the color to red by dragging the red slider all the way to 255 and making sure the other sliders are at zero. Then we want to change the size of the lines to be 0.001 points. This will ensure that the software reads the lines correctly. We will repeat these steps for the text, making sure there is no fill and setting the blue slider all the way to 255 and making sure that the other two are at zero. Once again, change the size to 0.001 points, and we're all set. Because font types vary computer to computer, we recommend converting all of your text to shapes by using the outline function. To do this, first make sure your text says what you want, because we won't be able to change it once it's outlined. Select the text using the selection tool, and go to type, then create outlines. Once that is done, your text has been converted into shapes, and it won't be changed if you use a different computer that doesn't have that font. Now we will go over how to prep a file that you want raster engraved. Let's say we want to engrave this image of Cosmo in the center of the larger gear. We start by downloading the Cosmo file as a JPEG and dragging and dropping him onto the artboard. Once our file is on the artboard, we first need to embed the file so that it shows up when we email it to the Makerspace. Once the image is embedded, we want to use the image trace function to make and expand the object. This will allow us to edit the fill and stroke of the image. Select the image and go to the toolbar. Go to Object, Image Trace, Make and Expand. One important thing to note is that when an image is traced, it creates doubles of every line because it traces the black and the white spaces. This is harmful to both the material you engrave and the laser cutter itself because it will cut and engrave everything twice, so we want to make sure we avoid that in our design. In order to get rid of that, we will switch to the Direct Selection tool 
and click on each of the white spaces in our image and delete them. To check if you've deleted them all, you can highlight the whole image and choose a fill color to see what is left. If the RGB sliders don't show up, we can click on swatches, select the color we want, and then click on color mixer. Looks like I missed some spots, so I will undo the fill and delete those other spots. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and drag across the design, and if the fill box is no longer a question mark, then we are good to go. Because we want to raster engrave this image, we want to keep the fill and make sure there is no stroke. We will click on the fill box and make sure the sliders are all set to zero. This will make the fill black. The image is all ready to be raster engraved. This same process can be done if we want to vector cut or vector engrave the Cosmo image. Instead of setting fill to black and stroke to zero, we would remove the fill and set the stroke to 0.001 and change the color to blue or red. This would cut or engrave the outline of the Cosmo image. Another common use for raster engraving is for images such as people or landscapes. Here I have a picture of a dog that I would like raster engraved. Once we have our image in Illustrator, select the image and go to Edit, Edit Color, Convert to Grayscale. This will allow the software to properly recognize the image for raster engraving. Keep in mind that the quality of the original image and the limitations of the laser cutter will affect the engraved image. Our file is ready to be sent to the Makerspace. Now we just need to save it and export it as an AI file and send it in an email. Don't forget to specify if you would like to purchase wood or acrylic or if you have your own materials that you would like to bring in. You will receive a confirmation email letting you know that you have been added to the queue. Now let's talk about how we can prepare our file using Microsoft PowerPoint. Start by creating a blank presentation and clearing the slide. Once again, we are going to set the dimensions of the workspace to be 24 inches by 18 inches. To do this, we go to the Design tab, click Slide Size, then Page Setup. Then we set the width to 24 inches and the height to 18 inches. Now we're ready to start creating our design. Let's go over some basic design tools in PowerPoint to get started. I'll show you how to combine shapes and edit them. To start, we will make a circle. Select the oval and hold the shift key to make a perfect circle. Now copy and paste it. Next, we will select the rectangle tool and create a rectangle. Drag the rectangle over the circles and line them up. To make these shapes become one shape, we use the union tool. Select all three shapes and in the shape format tab, select union. Another useful tool is point editor. With the shape selected, you can use this tool to edit certain points however you would like. Once we have a design we like, we can start preparing it by changing the colors just like we did in Illustrator. The first thing we need to do is make sure the design is ungrouped so we can select individual lines. We will start by selecting all of the lines we would like to be vector cut by holding down the shift key as we select each one. Then we will go to the top and select shape format and open the format pane. For cutting, we will make sure we have no fill, a solid line, change the color to red using the RGB sliders by setting red to 255 and the other two to zero. And finally set the line width to 0 0.01 points. For vector engraving, we repeat the process switching to the Text Options tab in the Format pane because we are editing text. Let's make sure we have no fill, a solid line, this time changing the color to blue using the RGB sliders by setting blue to 255 and leaving the other two at zero, and once again the line width to 0 0.01 points. This takes care of everything we want vector cut or engraved. One disadvantage to using PowerPoint is that it can't trace images like Illustrator can. This makes it difficult to convert images to a form where they can be vector cut or vector engraved without tracing every line by hand. That being said, we can still edit images so they can be raster engraved quite easily. This works for both photos and other images such as logos. Select the images you want raster engraved and go to the Picture Format tab. Go to Color and under Recolor, select Grayscale. These images are ready to be raster engraved.
Once we are satisfied with our design, we can save it as a PowerPoint file and send it to the Makerspace to be cut and engraved. And that's all there is to it. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out or come in person and talk to one of the employees at the Makerspace. We are always happy to help.